It took me about three years to get a proper diagnosis because my symptoms were so weird. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm Carly, for anybody who hasn't seen my videos, I'm a plant-based nutritionist and I've been gluten-free for over the past 10 and a half years and plant-based for the past five due to the celiac. So if you want more information on that, um, feel free to check out my other videos. I go into greater detail. Celiac disease is so often misdiagnosed because most patients are asymptomatic. They have no symptoms. And another big percentage have no GI symptoms, which is incredibly confusing considering that the small intestine is the major site of injury. So doctors don't connect the dots between what's happening externally and what pathology you're experiencing. Patients tend to have an array of symptoms and no celiac is the same as the other by means of symptoms. So this disease tends to mimic the symptoms of others. So the first cluster of symptoms I wanna talk about are the skin abnormalities I was experiencing. I have what is referred to as celiac disease of the skin, which is um, clinically termed dermatitis herpetiformis, an awful name. It's just called that because the blisters tend to form in groups and they also tend to form on extensor surfaces like the elbows and the knees uh, and the hairline. These blisters are so uncomfortable. So first you ingest the gluten and then one to three days later, you'll have this red splotch somewhere on your body and it will be so unbelievably itchy and then hot. It gets really warm and itchy and then all of a sudden the blister will arise and that's when it gets really painful. The way it was manifesting in my body was all of a sudden like the tips of my ears or the whole ear or um, sometimes my cheeks or a pinky or several fingers and sometimes both hands at once. It would seem like it would come out of nowhere because of that disconnect between when the last time was that you ingested something and when that trigger ultimately gets down far enough in your digestive tract to trigger the autoimmune response in the small intestine and generate that outward appearance of the symptom itself. After they would get bright red and inflame and become swollen, sometimes they would get so bad that they would crack open and bleed, particularly in the winter time. I remember being in class because I was 22, 23 at the time when I finally got properly diagnosed and I would be writing notes and there would be a smear of blood across each of my pages. It took a significant amount of time removing the gluten from my diet to completely resolve that issue. And today, out of nowhere, the tips of my middle finger might become red and inflamed for whatever reason I must have ingested some sort of gluten or maybe my body is responding in a similar response to another environmental trigger. It's hard to say, but it's a lot easier to live with than it was 10 years ago. It's a lot less severe of an um, experience. But I was also experiencing things like eczema and acne and that was very unusual for me prior to coming down with the celiac. So the next cluster of symptoms are joint pain and muscle soreness. This was incredibly debilitating. My neck would hurt so bad that I would be trying to stretch it and crack it while I'd be driving. And it would be so bad that I would be swerving in and out of my lane. Other joints were also impacted, but that was definitely the most severe. I also experienced severe migraines, which would induce a lot of visual problems. So it was hard for me to focus on something. I tried a number of different medications and nothing could resolve the extreme pain that I would experience during these migraines. A major area of concern for me was the cognition. It became so difficult to perform any sort of executive function. I couldn't plan, I couldn't anticipate, I could barely do my homework, my grades plummeted. So besides the brain fog and the trouble concentrating and the confusion, I was also having a lot of mental health issues such as depression and anxiety and other ADHD and OCD type symptoms. 
like I was becoming very impulsive and I started to do some compulsive behaviors over and over and over to soothe whatever it was inside of me because so many things in my body and in my life were falling apart. But also with the depression and the anxiety, I'm not 100% on whether the disease caused those or whether it was a factor of experiencing the disease itself. The last thing I want to cover for symptoms is the insomnia. I was having issues falling asleep. I would also wake up too early and the quality of sleep was terrible. I could never get to that point where I was like sufficiently entering REM to consolidate any of my memories and not any, but to consolidate some of my memories and thoughts and you know, important things that needed to be filed away just never got to that point in the majority of this time that I was severely impaired and suffering from all these other ailments. So I wanted to make this video because I know firsthand how incredibly alone and debilitating it can feel to be going through something as scary as a severe gluten intolerance. Regardless of whether or not your symptoms mimic what I was going through, just know that celiac disease can manifest in a number of ways. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, one celiac is never identical to another celiac. So you need to be proactive and go see your doctor or go see a doctor because the longer you suffer with these symptoms, the more irreversible damage you're doing to your mind and your body. And I regret that more than anything, not getting to a doctor um, before too much damage was done that I can't repair it through diet and lifestyle changes. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you are interested in more information on gluten-free diets or plant-based nutrition, uh, make sure you check out some of my other videos. Uh, see you next time.